Hey everyone, and welcome to World Heritage Journey, where today we're at the Royal Domain of Drottningholm in Stockholm, Southeast Sweden. Today we're at the Royal Domain of Drottningholm, a royal palace on the outskirts of Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. It dates from the end of the 17th century, though much of what you can see is from the 18th and 19th centuries. But it's been heavily associated with several important queens of Sweden. In fact, the name Drottningsholm literally means Queen's House in Swedish. Now it's still the royal residence for the King and the Queen of Sweden. Let's have a look around. So the foundations of the present day palace that you can see behind me were laid by the Dowager Queen Hedvig Eleonora and she eventually purchased the whole estate including the previous palaces in 1661. The reason for this was that the Treaty of Westphalia had just been signed ending years of religious warfare in Europe and Sweden had suddenly found itself as a great power and they needed a royal palace to fully befit that status. The design was inspired by particularly Versailles but also palaces in Italy as well and when you look at it from here you can really see the influence particularly from Versailles. The French Baroque garden that I'm standing in that also dates from the same era and took influence from the same sources. Like many of the European palace gardens that we've been to, Drottningholm has follies dotted around the landscape and these are little unexpected buildings or touches that just give the landscape something totally different. This is one of the most unique ones I've seen behind me and it's known as the guards tent for a fairly obvious reason. It dates from 1782 and it was designed to look like a Turkish military tent. But what's fascinating about it is that it's not actually built from canvas at all. The exterior is entirely made from sheet metal and the interior is wood. This cluster of buildings where we are now is known as the Chinese Pavilion. It dates from 1753 when they were constructed as a surprise birthday present for the Queen. Now, having been to China, I'm not sure that anyone who designed it had actually been to China, but it's still fascinating to see what 18th century Europeans thought Chinese architecture looked like. And the design is very beautiful as well, the way it melds the Baroque and the East Asian influences. And so the last area here to look at is the English garden, which in contrast to the highly stylized and designed French Baroque gardens, the English gardens are of course highly stylized and designed to not look like gardens at all. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Joel on the road and I'll see you at the next World Heritage site.